way, I would love to ask the first question that, uh, like, you could sum up your journey in, in, in short, like, how you, why you did BBA, and then how was the journey for a couple of years before you thought that you would love to do MBA, and then how it redirect towards you being where you are today. So, um, I mean, I wanted to get into a, like a technical field earlier. So you can see that uh, my first experience was into game testing. So, um, so when I started, uh, I wanted to know how technique things works. I am actually a coder. Uh, I used to do Java coding and all those things. So like self learned, not, uh, into like a fully, like it's never my curriculum. Um, but then I thought of getting into, and then it was more of a black box testing. Uh, I used to, you know, uh, overnight testing of the games uh, you know log the bugs and few games got released my name is there in the credit list also in some of the games which are there in the market so and after that uh, there i could uh, you know get into things where uh, i was involved into like kind of employee engagement activities and all those things so i it kind of generated interest for me uh, to get into a formal education into management and I, I thought let's get into a role where it can actually serve people so um, then when i started learning more of uh, my i would say the bug of photography caught up and then um, i started it is my own venture uh, panorama art studio so we are into systematics and filmmaking and ad films and content writing website content writing we didn't go into corporate because we we wanted to cater specifically towards arts um, not into corporate corporate per se so it's still running uh, kind of little less nowadays after COVID times, but yes, it is still up. Um, and then, uh, so after that, I did my BBA. After BBA, I worked with uh, Hexagon as executive search. Through Hexagon, I was with Allscripts and GS Lab. So it was more like a recruitment kind of a job where I got to know more of functions of the entire organization, how things work, uh, how actually uh, can I can you know navigate myself into the senior management of an organization so that was one of the areas i kind of loved working with and after that i gave my cat so i got into uh, in search for mba um, after one and a half years of experience almost and then uh, during mba my, my, one of my first condition was i will be doing internships i didn't want to sit in the classes and just do it so first year i very sincerely attended and second year onwards i started working as intern in different so i was working with uh, uh, like few companies in turn, like in Pune itself, uh, like two, three months, two, three months kind of internships. And then finally I got a chance with KPA as more of a placement. So again, there I joined as a recruitment, uh, executive, uh, then because I had my previous experience, it kind of helped me. And after a year, uh, there was an opportunity, a very courageous decision. I would say that, uh, I got an opportunity to work with campus hiring. So me and my manager just two of us were there and we had to set up the entire campus hiring process uh, layout like completely. I mean, campus hiring was happening earlier also, uh, but then we had to revamp the entire process uh, because we wanted to go paperless. So we wanted to, you know, restructure up. So I, I designed a program called as PACE. So it's like program for academic collaboration and engagement. Uh, so basically that was the turning point because there I learned something about program management and project management. So I actually, when I started working with campus, my main job was to not to come to office and attend the colleges and meeting the deans, uh, kind of sell this program to them and make them understand how it is important for the students that it is in line with KPIT's business. So, uh, it was more like an elective we used to offer and, uh, like most of the colleges we found were more like it was, uh, autonomous colleges, I would say, so okay. where they can offer that course and uh, it will be more of a plug and play resource for us. So we used to go in the seventh semester, hire people, those who are hired will be taking up that course. And when they come in the next year, uh, like once they complete their engineering, they would be more of a plug and play resource for us in our business. So our training time reduced. So the concept of ROI came in the picture there and it worked fantabulously. So I worked there for almost three and a half years as campus recruitment, almost four, I would say. So four batches I hired for KPIT and ran that PACE program. And after that, I got an opportunity to work with uh, uh, KPIT itself within a different unit uh, as HRBP. So okay. 
HRBP is a business partner uh, profile in HR where uh, I will be working as a bridge between employees and business. So I will okay. get an understanding about business as well, uh, like the capex and opex and all those things. And wherein I understand the employee side also, where the concerns and queries can be solved. So uh, being that bridge there, uh, I got an opportunity there uh, when KPIT was uh, taken over by Birla Soft. So my business went to Birla Soft. Autonomous, uh, I mean automotive business of KPIT side went separate. So I was involved in harmonization of bands. I must have a harmonizing of the policies. So I was among the team. So I got that opportunity. Uh, and after that, uh, I thought, uh, let's get into something which is a smaller team where I can build things. And then I got into Indicus. So KPIT Birla Soft was actually one company. So almost six and a half years I was there. Um, and then uh, when I went to Indicus, it was like almost 40 people company where I from scratch, I had to write down the policies, set the processes, get the recruitment place in, and then we grew. Um, so when I joined, it was a 25 people company. When I left the organization where everything was set, it was planned uh, exit, uh, like two years I would be there and then set up. So you can see that tenure also is almost two years there. So, and then I got an opportunity with Nielsen where I am currently working with. So NIQ uh, is an amazing firm uh, and I would say it's it's currently placed at great place to work uh, in India, and yes. uh, we are um, among the top 50 best places for professional services. So I would say that proudly that I am a part of a team which is a great place to work, and who is making the entire firm as great place to work. So we are around uh, 1,500 people in technology, uh, 500 in Pune, rest in Chennai. So and I am catering to technology vertical of the organization. So whenever we see that uh, the pride about having Nielsen IQ badge on my uh, chest is uh, whenever we see Nielsen IQ, you will see that if you any one of us Google about and I think all of you know about NIQ. It's not new for you. This brand is not new. 100 year old organization. It's a, a amazing legacy what we carry. Uh, so even if I search my Google results for uh, Lok Sabha elections, you will see ECI via Nielsen IQ. Correct. So that's the pride I take uh, that it is reaching every single household and not just via this, uh, every single FMCG product, what is being mapped in India, we are trying to you know put it into right data so that the manufacturers are helping. And um, I think this is why I think we are connected and uh, people will try to understand more about how and what all things we are doing. So this has been my journey and uh, it's great. Uh, hasn't been a single Monday where I felt uh, I want to, I don't want to go to office or I don't want to log in for day. Uh, so it's kind of keeping my, my teammates, my uh, people who are there in the office, whom I am tagged as HR to. So they keep me motivating and uh, creating something new. So a lot of things we are doing here, a lot of unlearn happened when I joined NIQ. Uh, completely different processes, completely different uh, insights I got. So it's a great uh, journey so far.